Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. Kristen here with a Tuesday tip. So this one comes out of one of my favorite books, shout out for Observe, Collect, Draw. And I just wanna read you a little bit. For those of you that aren't familiar with this, this comes out of the amazing data visualizers who did the Dear Data Project. Uh, Georgia Lupi and Stephanie Posavec, phenomenal female, awesome rockstar data visualizers. They say in the introduction, what is data? Every plant, every person, every interaction we take can be mapped, counted, and measured. And these measurements can be what we call data. Once you know how to find these invisible numbers or words or images, I would add, you can begin to see data everywhere and in everything. They have some like great examples of where we've got some data. Now, for those unfamiliar with this book, they then go through all these great examples of how to create data visualizations, how to collect data on your own lives, and how to create those data visualizations. And there are a couple that I think are like worth calling out, you know, that we're like in January, and many of us start New Year's resolutions. We're a couple weeks in, we've like hopefully settled back in with our students back, you know, right, we're in the school year, in the middle of school year, come on folks, let's keep going. So one of them is number 30, for a way to visualize how we start and keep new a new habit so thinking about um, how to collect that how to collect that data this is something that i was thinking might be fun to do with your students in your class like what are new habits that they're trying to keep do you have any new year's resolutions are you trying to form some new habits in the new year are some of your students maybe needing to form some new habits to do a little bit better in their classes? Different things like that. So it gives ideas of ways to color the data and some options to collect the data, but really you can make it up on your own. You can, this is the beauty of data visualization from this perspective, you decide. Another one that I thought was fun is the, your weather mood. So collecting data on sort of like What's going on with the weather? Is it hot or cold? And how are you feeling about that? And using that, sort of bringing those three things together to think about how to visualize this. This could be done across your whole class period, all the students. It could be done across time, over a week, or things like that. A way to get students, get our students thinking about data from a different perspective, but that's anchored into, say, maybe some of our content if we're teaching a weathering content unit, or just anchored in their personal experiences of things that they have experienced. Okay, last one, really pulling out that personal experience. There is also, depending on the age of our students, but many of our students, let's just be honest in this, lovely year of 2023 really love their phone and so their fourth suggestion here in observe collect draw is to collect data about the apps on your phone and the app usage most of our phones give us data visualizations about that but how fun would it be to get our students making some of those options why am i suggesting this well one i think it's fun but two, it's a low floor, high ceiling way to get kids practicing data that can build their data skills and build their confidence in working with data. Hope this is helpful. Would love to hear your thoughts and what you're doing in your classroom, getting your students working with data. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, y'all.